So in this video, we are going to create this rock, paper, scissors game using MediaPipe Hands Library. If you want me to make more such fun and learning projects, please subscribe to my channel. And without any further ado, let's get started. So first, we'll open the Python ideally and import the necessary packages, which are MediaPipe and CV2. I will also import a local file hand underscore variables, which I have created beforehand and I'll show you in a second. Then we'll open the capture using the video capture function. We will then shorthand the hands module of media pipe. This module will actually help us to find the coordinates in the hands and fingers as you can see right now on the screen. We will then instantiate the hands class and set some parameters. The first one is going to be static underscore image underscore mode which we can set to true or false. It is by default set to false which means that once the hand is detected it will just track those points and not run the hand detection again and again. We will have to set it to true as we will always be changing our signs from rock to paper to scissor in any order. Second, we have the max underscore num underscore hands, which is the maximum number of hands to be detected. We will keep it to one. Third is minimum underscore detection underscore confidence, which we will set it to 0.5, which is also the default. This basically means that the algorithm will claim to have detected a hand if it is more than 50% sure only. We will then call the method as just hands. Now we will open a while loop and continue checking whether the capture is opened or not. Inside the while loop, we read a frame. After that, we check whether the frame we read was valid or not. And if not, then we break. We then write the process function to get the results for hand detection. We will pass the frame, but first we will convert it to RGB as MediaPipe uses the RGB format, but OpenCV uses the BGR format. Now this result variable will have all the landmarks for the hand and to get it, we need to write multi underscore hand underscore landmarks. To check whether we have actually detected a hand, we use the results variable. So we check whether results is equal to none or not. If it is not none, then we keep our landmarks in the hn variable and subscript it with zero. So the results variable will now have the landmarks of as many hands as we specify in the max underscore num underscore hands that we saw some time back. Now I think it is the right time to show how the landmarks are arranged in the results variable. So if you print the output, you will see that there are many elements and each have x, y and z values attached to them. If you calculate there, we will have 21 such elements. Each element corresponds to each of the landmarks as shown here. So you can see here that there are numbers attached to each landmark. And if you remember, I told you about a local file in the start. That file actually has the corresponding landmarks and the numbers attached. Okay, so you can see the full list here. Now, let me tell you that we are not going to use all the points that you are seeing here. We will be only using the pips that are the joints which you can see here and the tips of the fingers. So, the tip of the index finger is this and pip is the point in red here. Now, if you look here, while showing the sign of a paper, all the four tips are above the pips. While for the rock sign, all the tips are below the pips. For scissor, the tips of the index finger and the middle finger is above the pip and vice versa for the ring and pinky finger. So now let's get back to code and find the pip and tip of the index finger. Using the hn.landmark and in the bracket, we use index underscore finger underscore pip. This is the variable that we have defined in the hands variable file. We will only be using the y coordinates as only the height is important and not the width of the landmark. Similarly, we'll do it for the tip. As you can see here, we have IP, which I call index pip and IT for index tip. We will now find the tips and the pips for the other three fingers. We will then define a TXT variable, which we will leave it empty for now. Now is the time that we will check whether the sign shown in the video at any time is a rock or paper or scissor. So let's first do for a rock. So first we will check the condition for a rock and send all the tips and the pips value as a parameter. We then define the function and receive the parameters. If you remember, all the tips were below the pips in the rock sign. So we will write that as a condition. One thing that you should notice here is that even though we say that tips should be below the pips, but in the condition we have written IP is lesser than IT. The reason for that is that the coordinate axis for an image looks something like this and the height increases downwards and width increases rightwards and not vice versa. Okay, so if the condition is satisfied, 
that is if all the tips are below the pips then we return true else false going back we now want to display these images in the left side of the frame so for the rock we will use the rock image and hence we'll first read the image then find the width and height of the rock image and then paste it to the frame at the top left corner lastly also set the txt variable as rock now do the same thing for paper and scissors and also write the respective conditions for them lastly we also write the code for putting the text in the frame in the img parameter we use the frame variable we then use the txt variable that we saw earlier and put that as the value for the text parameter lastly we show the frame we also define the wait key condition and release the capture at last cv2.destroy all windows if we compile the program and run we see that we are getting the desired results so if we show the sign of rock we get rock and similarly for paper and scissors if you want me to make more stuff like this please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button thank you very much